So this here is my new graphics tablet. It's an XP Pen Deco Pro Medium Wireless. So let me explain to you why I think these screenless tablets, these displayless tablets, tablets without a screen, uh, are actually better than those fancy graphics tablets with the screen in the same unit. You probably want one of those, do you? Because they, they look pretty nice, don't they? You don't want one of these primitive ones without the screen. But these so-called older style screenless pen tablets are still very popular among many artists as they have uh, many advantages over the ones with the screen. As soon as you get used to the whole, you know, severing your hand and eye coordination. Um, so here are four reasons. Uh, four reasons. Maybe five. Why you want to buy a screenless graphics tablet for your computer. Okay, so reason number one. You can always see the entirety of what you're drawing as you're using your computer monitor, which is not obscured by your hand. So it's easy to see the path you're trying to draw. That was not a perfect circle. Especially when you're dragging the pen towards you. You know, in the direction of your dominant hand, my right hand in my case, I often find that I have slightly more control when dragging the pen towards me then away from me. So, you know, that comes in handy. Yeah. Uh, and Okay, reason number two, it's easier to get a good value, color accurate setup with a large screen. So you may already have like a good computer monitor, which is pretty color accurate. Why would you want to look at some tiny 13 inch screen display tablet? I'm mentioning like a 12 to 13 inch one because that's the size you would have to buy when comparing it to the price of a reasonable 24-inch monitor and a screenless graphics tablet. But you may already have a, a good computer monitor. So I don't know about you, but I prefer looking at a larger screen as opposed to a smaller one than a lot of laptops, which my hand is mostly covering at any one time. So, yeah, the tablet surface. So when using a screened tablet, the surface of the tablet needs to be quite smooth, otherwise the texture of the screen will begin to affect the clarity of the image. And to be fair, some people like the screen to be as smooth as glass, but I don't. No, no. I have actually uh, drawn an iPad Pro for a while, which had a paper-like screen protector on it, and that was, that was pretty good. I can't say it was exactly like paper though, but a screenless tablet does not have the limitation of needing to be a somewhat smooth screen so you can see the thing properly. No, it can be as rough as you like. And if you buy one that isn't rough enough for your taste, then you can easily fix that yourself with some tape and whatever textured material of your choice is. I had an older Huion H610, this thing here, and I found that the drawing surface was just far too smooth and slippery. So I used to stick like sheets of paper on it and um, that worked really great. That was so nice. Oh, the texture, the roughness, the control. Oh. Anyway, it was a good trick to use when your tablet gets really worn and smooth as well. But you may also find that depending on what surface you put on it, you, uh, you'll wear down your pen nibs just a little bit faster. Um, you know, those these little replaceable pen nibs that on the end of your graphics tablet pen. I think the ones for this pen here, the XP pen, they're like 20 cents each Australian if you buy them in packs of a hundred. Um, I think the Wacom ones are like more than like a dollar each. But don't panic about it too much because normally a single nib can take tons of drawing. Okay, reason number four. This is without a doubt the best feature of these tablets. It's also the feature that people hate the most when they first use one. The fact that your hand and your eye have been visually separated and then reattached through a computer. The reason people hate this is because they haven't given themselves enough time to get used to it and also appreciate its long-term benefits. Because with this, you can develop the greatest and most comfortable posture while drawing. Your back can be straight with a straight neck 
and your eyes looking forward at the computer monitor, and your arm, that can be at basically any angle that you find most comfortable. A lot of people even get um, little stands for these. I was looking at the commercially shot photos of people using the uh, XB10, take two. I was looking at the commercially shot photos of people using the XP10, XP10? Goodness me. Do I have a, a brain problem? Surely not. I can't even say anything properly. I think people would have told me if I had a brain problem by now. Although you, you wouldn't actually say that to someone's face, would you? Oh my goodness. Okay, um, so I was looking at the commercially shot photos of people using the XP Pen graphics tablets, the ones with the display. And um, it looks like in these idealized photos, the best case scenario with your neck is bent downward slightly and your eyeballs trying to look through your jaw. And I just thought to myself, well, you guys would be more comfortable if you spent less money and bought one of these. So by separating what you're drawing and where you're drawing it, you no longer have to make a compromise between the comfort of your back and the comfort of your arm. You can achieve an unnatural level of comfort when drawing. Like when drawing traditionally on a, or on a screen tablet, you would need to bring up your working surface at quite a steep angle. So your neck and back are straight, but then your arm needs to be held upright constantly. And my arms like to complain when I'm doing that for long periods of time, you know. Um, but with this graphics tablet, my wayward spine doesn't complain, my arm doesn't complain. In fact, the only part of my body that gets uncomfortable is my legs and my butt after sitting for too long, which is probably quite unhealthy, come to think about it. Maybe I should have bought a display tablet to encourage myself to get frequent breaks from sitting. Mm. Now, choosing a graphics tablet. I think there's only like three brands worth considering. Or there's a... No, there's four brands. There's that new fancy brand. What's it called? Zen Labs or something? I can't remember. Anyway. But Wacom is the oldest and most trusted brand when it comes to these input devices. But there's also some Chinese brands now which are well known for making a pretty good product. One is Huion and the other is XP Pen. So about nine years ago, I bought my first graphics tablet, which was the Huion H610. And here's a pen that came with it. Now back then, this was not a very well-known company and I remember getting it really cheap. Uh, and you know, it's a pretty good tablet actually. And after all that time, it still works too. This is uh, starting to peel off though. Now there's probably another reason, like, okay, reason number five, but this is uh, an iffy one. These screenless graphics tablets will probably last you longer than a screen version because there's less to go wrong, you know? It, it may be, I don't know. Anyway, even though it still worked, I had some driver problem with it at some stage, so after using it for like eight years, I got another graphics tablet, the one by Wacom. Not to be confused with the screen graphics tablet called the Wacom One, even though it's sometimes in some stores they call them the same thing. Oh, no, it's very confusing anyway. See, look, One by Wacom. It's a cute little tablet, and I think this is Wacom's current budget screenless tablet. Now, I thought being a Wacom, it would be amazing, but I found it to be only, like, okay. I think that Wacom might have been better not making this tablet and just left the budget tablet production to the Chinese brands because all they've done in my eyes is they've just dragged down their good name to the level of the cheaper competition what I hated most about this tablet was the pen it feels so horrible and cheap feeling plastic pen with no grip at all it feels like a cheap toy so you see this uh, what do I call this thing this grip yes um, I added this grip on here. Let me see if I can just get this off. Eh. So you can see what it was originally like. Had no grip at all. It's a nasty, cheap thing. Putting that grip on that I'd pulled off another pen from somewhere, uh, that helped a little. 
but it still just felt so cheap. It's such a... Every time I held this pen, especially without the grip, it was such a displeasure to hold. Eventually, I also found out that this size graphics tablet was not big enough for my tastes. A little bit too cramped. So then I decided just to buy the best quality tablet that I knew of. The Wacom Intuos Pro. I think that's how you pronounce it. In Intuo? Intuos? Anyway, I looked at the price of the large model and I was like, oh, I don't have that many kidneys to spare. Especially for a company that thinks that this one by Wacom pen was good enough quality. It really left a bad taste in my mouth. So I went looking for the best tablet made by a Chinese brand. And apparently this one here has to be one of them. This XP Pen Deco Pro. This one is the MW version, stands for medium wireless. And the XP Pen Medium is also a little larger than the Wacom's Medium. So that's pretty good too. Uh, they don't make a large model of this tablet, only a small and a medium, so I don't know what's going on there. Are they going to release a large? I don't know, probably not. But the medium is quite large enough. Let me give you a bit of a review. I love this control panel. It has a scroll wheel. I can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel here. That works very well. All of these buttons are programmable with the uh, XP Pen graphic driver. This black section in the center here can either be a, or can be many things. You can use it to zoom. I like to set it to, you know, the brush size. You can also just make it a mouse as well. A computer mouse, that's pretty cool. All of these buttons feel very nice. They've got that that nice kind of softish, but also tactile feel. Bit of a snap to it. Doesn't feel cheap at all. Uh, the texture of the surface feels pretty good. It has a bit of texture to it. It's not particularly rough though. I wouldn't have minded if it was like a fraction rougher, but I am someone who does like a pretty rough surface. So if they made this tablet to please me with its surface, uh, probably no one would buy it. That's not too bad because it also came with a drawing glove. Now your two fingers can feel like a little lycra clad cyclist gliding across the surface, yeah. Another thing I really loved about this tablet is the drivers. The drivers are fantastic. And what's most amazing about them is that I have been a, uh, a Linux user now for a long time. I've been using Arch Linux for like, would have to be 10 years. And in that time, I'm not used to companies releasing a Linux driver with their product. You usually have to go hunt around for some kind of open source driver, you know, that someone else has made. For internal hardware, maybe, but... So I found the Linux drivers to be amazing. So thank you, XP Pen. I only found one bug in them, and that was the, uh, I think it was the rotate function with this scroll wheel thing. Uh, somehow mucked up my key bindings in my keyboard or something when I activated it. So, uh, but once I disabled that and I inserted my own key bindings into it, uh, it worked really, really well. And it's never crashed at all. Really good. But Wacom... What do they give you? Do they give you Linux drivers? No, they don't. They give you nothing. In fact, I've heard that the Windows drivers for Wacom is pretty buggy and it crashes a lot. And the XP, the XP Pen drivers, more reliable. So that's pretty good. XP Pen is a Chinese company. And that's not bad. I'm not saying that's bad. It's just that some people don't have trust issues, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe... They, they might put something in, in their drivers or something, you know. No, I'm not making any accusations, but... Uh, but some Chinese companies have been known for certain things. You, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I was a bit worried that maybe a graphics tablet driver, which probably is actually designed to log and look at keystrokes to make these buttons work, could be a pretty big security flaw. Proprietary Chinese driver... So I think I ran the driver for like 15 minutes or something with various network tools. Did a TCP dump, trying to see if it was, you know, sending or receiving anything across the internet. And I, I saw nothing, so I only saw some like local network traffic, which had nothing to do with the driver itself. So 
So that was good. So you don't want any drivers connecting to the internet, I don't think. So thank you, XP Pen. But if you don't want to use the drivers, um, this tablet works out of the box in Linux anyway. So the only reason why I installed the drivers is to just easily change these key bindings, these controls. Oh, another thing about the scroll wheel I found. Um, it does work pretty well, but the polling rate of the wheel is not particularly high. So if you if you so if you make it go really fast, you'll you know you'll get some strange behaviour. If you if you really spin it for that, it's just jumping in and out. It doesn't know what to do with itself. Oh, you're going too fast. Anyway, so there you go. That's my little um graphics tablet history and reasoning and whatever else. Thank you for listening to my justifications for my purchasing decision. I could actually afford a screened tablet, so this wasn't the case of the fox and the sour grapes, if you know that story. I do actually like the posture this thing allows. It's very nice. It's a nice relief from drawing uh, traditionally where I have to bend down slightly or lift my arm up high or something, you know. Anyway, so uh, thank you uh, for whatever. So there you go. I love this pen too, the quality of this pen. It's very nice. It's nice and like soft and rubberized here. It's a lightweight, battery-free pen, but it still has, you know, enough weight to it to feel like it's, it's worth something. The buttons are nice and soft with a subtle little tactile feel about them. Okay, bye, bye, goodbye. Go away now. There's nothing more to see.